at the outset, uh, you mentioned uh, rolling the votes. Uh, and I think we need to kind of agree on a method of notification since there are some problems with uh, our system right now. Hopefully, they'll be worked out if that's uh, the staff yeah. can work that out. Sure. Thank you. Absolutely. I'd also like to commend uh, the dedicated men and women of the Office of Ledge Council for working with staff to draft the legislative materials we are considering today on a timeline and through both a religious and federal holiday. Mm -hmm. Turning to the legislation before us today, I'm troubled that a bill called the Department of Homeland Security Authorization Act for fiscal year 2012 does not actually authorize funding for the department to undertake all its missions. In fact, nowhere in this 181-page bill is there a top-line funding level for DHS. In contrast, I will be offering an amendment to fund the department at $43.22 billion, the level requested by the President, which this committee supported earlier this year as reflected in the bipartisan budget recommendations we submitted to the Budget Committee. This markup is our opportunity, while the so-called Super Committee meets be behind closed doors to decide where in the federal budget to cut to stand together and send a strong bipartisan message of support for the department. Approving this bill without adequate top line funding is tantamount to rubber stamping H.R. 2017, a Homeland Security appropriation bill that the chairman and every Democratic member of this committee vocally opposed in June. At that time, Mr. Chairman, you and I agreed that the appropriation bill was fatally flawed as it failed to provide adequate funding for the department to carry out its critical security missions. My view on H.R. 2017 has not changed. I still believe it cuts the department's budget in dangerous ways as an authorizer. I feel an obligation to do something about it. Beyond the failure to set up a top line funding level for the department, the chairman's bill fails woefully short of being a comprehensive authorization bill for the department. For instance, it fails to authorize the directorate responsible for DHS's cybersecurity, infrastructure protection, emergency communication, and federal building security operations. The National Protection and Program Directorate has operated without specific authorization since 2007, when then Secretary Michael Chertoff established it. We have an obligation as authorizers to make sure that DHS's components are held accountable. We cannot adequately do that if we stay silent about our expectations for major DHS components and operations. To address this and other glaring omissions, I, along with my fellow Democratic colleagues, will be offering amendments. Interestingly, even as the bill avoids actually funding DHS or authorizing components within the department to actually execute its missions and activities, H.R. 3116 places a multitude of new mandates on DHS, most notably on the management and science and technology directorates. In particular, it is worth noting that the bill tasked the department's directorate of science and technology with many new congressional mandates at a time when the S&T Undersecretary has told us that in the wake of the House passed DHS appropriation bill, she would have to cancel scores of research projects and lay off scientists. By any measure, H.R. 3116 is little more than a simulation of an authorization bill. A better descriptor might be to call it a collection of assorted ideas, and nowhere are their ideas more flawed than when it comes to the homeland security challenge of countering violent ideology. Ideology seems to be at the heart of a number of pro problematic provisions. The ideolo ideology that the, brace, that the bill embraces runs counter to my personal values and beliefs. While I acknowledge that the violent ideology espoused by terrorist organization, that Al-Qaeda is dangerous, I refuse to turn a blind eye to the violent ideologies espoused 
by right-wing militias and other groups that seek to do harm to our nation. As a nation, we cannot fall into the trap of what the 9-11 Commission called a failure of imagination. It is one thing if you, Mr. Chairman, should choose to be single-minded on this issue. It's quite another when you direct the Department to establish a position to carry out your objectives. Section 102 seems to do just that. And while I'm on the subject of the 9-11 Commission, I cannot see from a cost-benefit perspective why we would want to reopen the investigation when we all acknowledge that the 9-11 Commission report painstakingly answered the question that haunts all Americans after those deadly attacks. Yet, Title IV would do just that. Finally, H.R. 3116 seeks to greatly expand civil immunity provisions that were narrowly crafted back in 2007 for reports of potential terrorism activities in transportation. Since that time, there is no evidence that the fear of litigation has prevented Americans, including the Muslim Americans who came forward to help throw it two of the last two attempted terrorist plots since 2009 Christmas Day incident coming forward. Title VIII is a solution looking for a problem. This is not how we should be legislating. Before yielding back, I'd like to address the press statement the chairman released upon the introduction of this bill last week. It states that the introduction and forthcoming markup of H.R. 3116 is yet another example of robust legislative oversight of DHS under Republican leadership. I find it difficult to reconcile the chairman's claim of robust legislative oversight on the Republican leadership with the committee's failure to take a single bill to the floor during this Congress. At this point, during the 111th Congress under Democratic leadership, the committee had taken to the floor secured passage of seven bills, including a bill to authorize the Transportation Security Administration. If zero bills passed by the House constitutes robust legislative oversight of DHS, where does seven amount to? The statement also makes certain assertions about past efforts to move DHS authorization bill. Let me just remind the chair that unlike the other two former chairmen of this panel, he's never seen his authorization bill passed by the House. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.